In 2003, Brian Boucher was looking for a roommate to help share the rent, and John Williams was looking for a place to stay. It was a match no different from thousands of others that happen on Craigslist all the time. And for a while, it looked like it would all work out. That is until Williams began acting strangely. To sweeten the deal, Boucher had offered his new roommate the only bedroom in the apartment, hoping that the added privacy would convince him to stay. It's just what Williams was looking for because Williams had a secret. According to Boucher, Williams kept to himself a lot. Boucher could spend hours in the apartment thinking he was all alone, only for Williams to suddenly walk out of his room with his head down, do whatever he had to do, and then disappear inside the dark bedroom again with only the soft click of the door's lock as a farewell. At this point, Boucher began to get worried. As the months passed, Williams began staying away from the apartment for extended periods of time. And during one of these absences, after they'd been living together for around 10 months, Boucher had had enough. He broke into the locked bedroom, intent on packing up Williams' things and sending him on his way. On the bed, he found a thick manila envelope, and what he saw inside made his blood run cold. It was filled with torn up credit card offers, that Boucher had received in the mail. Williams had been going through his trash and collecting pieces of it. Along with the shredded mail was a sheet of notebook paper with the names and addresses of Boucher's family members, including their personal details, like the date his parents had been married. Doesn't sound good. On another sheet of paper was Boucher's credit card information and the passwords to many of the websites he used. It was like a bizarre file on Boucher's private life. Then Boucher found a diary, and at the end of one of the entries, he found a chilling sentence. I'm only now just starting to get over being afraid every time someone looks at me twice in the street. <laughs> every time a cop looks at me thinking, they know. After a quick Google search, Bowger found his roommate on the front page of America's Wanted. Seems months earlier, Williams, whose real name was Dino Loren Smith, had pulled off a jewel heist in San Francisco, making off with $10 million in diamonds. A call to the police revealed that Williams was already in custody, thankfully. Bosher never found out why he'd been collecting that personal data, but he does know the situation could have ended much worse. Yeah. Catherine Olson had recently graduated from college and was working part-time as a nanny. She was 24 years old. Meanwhile, 19-year-old Michael Anderson liked to play paintball and had wondered what it would feel like to kill somebody. Posing as a mother named Amy, Anderson posted a Craigslist ad in 2007 claiming to be looking for a person to babysit a child the following day. Olson jumped at the opportunity, and they made arrangements for her to show up at the house around 10 a.m. to start the job. According to some comments made by Olson to her roommate, she had a weird feeling about this job, and she decided to go through with it anyway. There simply was no way she could have seen what was coming. Arriving at the house, a rundown split level in Savage, Minnesota, Catherine Olson was greeted by Anderson, who led her up to his bedroom on the second floor. Nobody's sure exactly what happened next, but at some point, Catherine Olson tried to run. Anderson shot her in the back with a three fifty seven Magnum, dragged her body down the stairs, and stuffed her in the trunk of his car. He abandoned the car a few blocks away. Then in an attempt to destroy the evidence, Michael Anderson crushed Catherine's Olson cell phone and wrapped it in a bloody towel before dropping it off into a public trash can. He apparently didn't realize that the towel had his name written on it in black marker. Thankfully, in 2009, Michael Anderson was sentenced to life in prison without parole.